the members of the Massachusetts Teachers Association, working together for students, public education, and our communities. Good evening. I would like to talk to you briefly about uh, free higher education. So I want you to imagine a place on planet Earth where there are government-run schools for every child and those children go to that school for free. Well, that's Williamstown and that's Pittsfield and Barnstable and Acton. That's all of our schools, right? We all believe that public education should be free. You don't charge anyone for walking in the door of your schools. It was in our state that this idea was pioneered, right? This is Horace Mann kind of pioneered the notion of universal public education. And at that time, it was K through six. It was an elementary education. Later on, through our you know, complicated governmental systems, we decided that it really should be through eighth grade, then 10th grade, then through 12th grade. And that's where it stopped. And there's this notion that there is K through 12. And then the three months later, after you leave 12th grade, you start paying at UMass Amherst $12,000 a year. What, why, what's, what's, what happened there? Who made that um, distinction so clear? Where is it written? In what tablet is it carved that 12th grade is of the full extent of a public education? Not on these tablets, I checked, <laughs> right? They don't say anything, that, there's nothing sacred about 12th grade. And so I'm gonna argue about why we need to have um, free public higher education. A lot of people have been saying 12 is not quite the right amount. Our own governor said success in the 21st century demands more than a high school diploma. These two gentlemen, unfortunately, on some <laughs> education policies, they're too similar. <laughs> but both of them, to give them credit, said almost exactly the same thing to Congress. High school diploma is not enough for an individual to succeed and for our country to succeed in the 21st century. That should have made things easy, right? Both two presidents, Republican, Democrat, all pushing for this. It hasn't been easy, as you all well know. This is just a graph showing that how we cut public higher education funding from 2008 to 2013, 37.4%. What happens when you cut funding? Schools raise tuition. We've raised tuition in those same years, 22.4%. You cut funding, you raise tuition, what does that lead to? Skyrocketing student debt. Right? And that's almost as straight up as you can go. This is not the kind of curve you want to see when you're looking at an evaluation, an examination of debt. Um, what it means is that what was once affordable, where those lines crossed, that's when you could work a minimum wage job at UMass Amherst and leave that four years debt free. When you see that alligator jaw opening up, that's called debt. <laughs> that's the distinction between the, 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 the minimum wage you're earning and the amount it's actually costing today our students at UMass Amherst graduate with $30,000 or more um, debt. And that debt sticks with them. Remember, you can't get rid of student debt. So many of them are paying off that debt for years and years and years. And so we are ending up with situations like this. <laughs> We're going to have old people at their 70th anniversary saying, yay, we, we paid off our student debt. Um, OK, so you, maybe I've convinced you by, at this point that um, it's, this is a problem for us as a community, as a, as a commonwealth, as well as a nation. Um, and other, you might, though, in other states, you might say, well, we don't need to educate everyone because we've got natural resources that can cover that. So I once did a walk from Pittsfield to Westfield to Framingham to Boston. I went across the whole state. I never once saw an oil well. I never once saw a gold mine with lots of gold. I never even found El Dorado with that. <laughs> I mean, I went through Framingham, and that was close, but it's not exactly the same thing. We don't have those kind of natural resources. What we have is people, and we have educated people. And if we continue to make higher education unaffordable, we will not have the economy, nor the culture and the civic life that we um, believe we should have in this commonwealth or in this nation. All right, but you're asking this. OK, OK, fine, it's, I believe you. But what's it going to cost? We pay. When, when we believe in something, whether it is bailing out AIG or giving wealthy people tax breaks or starting wars in other countries, we find the money. If we care enough, we will find the money. But if you want the numbers, it costs about 60 to 7 million dollars, 60 or 70 million dollars to provide community college for every student each year in Massachusetts. It would cost 60 billion dollars 
to pay for all public university tuition and fees for every single student in this country, graduate students and undergraduates. Now that's a big number, $60 billion. That's a few months in Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, it's also if we lifted the cap on the social security tax so that Charlie Baker would pay more than, um, pay his social security on his full income, not just one-tenth of his income, you would gain $100 billion, right? And every year already we spend $77 billion in various grants, Pell Grants, all kind of grants and tax breaks for education. Lots of it goes to private universities. In other words, the money is there right now to start this grand experiment. Okay, pie in the sky? You're still saying, okay, maybe we have the money, but it's really nuts idea. It's kind of way out there. It's a little bit too radical. Maybe you got, maybe you got that in Rome or something. <laughs> Actually, it's more like this. It's more like back to the future. Why? Community colleges used to be almost completely free. New York City schools, all of them, were free. In um, all across the world, higher education is generally free. In Germany, they added, ta added some fees a few years ago. They rescinded them under protest. And now Tennessee, Mississippi, they are all pursuing free community college. Yes, we are eating the dust of Tennessee and uh, Mississippi, not to be chauvinistic or anything, but we should be leading there. Okay, let me bring this though down to, as a conclusion. You know, I've talk, I started at Planet Earth, talked about these global issues and the numbers. Let me bring it down to an individual person. I know a guy um, who grew up in Nazi Germany, in Nazi Berlin. This is his photo album from that time. You can see this is from the 1936 Olympics, the Jesse Owens Olympics. Um, and this is the same year that this guy was kicked out of his public schools for being Jewish. And so he and his family were lucky. They got out of Nazi Germany and got to the United States, where after basic training, some Chinese language study, he was sent to Shanghai to be an intelligence officer in the US Army. Comes back with the GI Bill, goes to the University of Mont, goes to Ver and goes to Harvard. Because of the GI Bill, which provided free education to all those returning GIs, another precedent for free um, higher education. And that's how my father became a professor at UMass Amherst, an activist, a citizen, loyal American, and an MTA member as well. So, <laughs> so I grew up, as this university was growing, that's me on the right, roaming around this campus that was growing up in response to the, the GI Bill and, their, and the children of those uh, former GIs, the expansion of the public higher education idea, and when it was still essentially free or close to free to go um, to UMass Amherst. So I would, I'm hoping that we can get finally rid of K-12, K through 12, and embrace P through 16 as our motto. That's the way it should be. And I, indeed, and I hope as well that um, we can fulfill that, that vision of Horace Mann for a universal public education up, updated for our own time, which means there should be lifelong public education that takes you through college. And who else should do fight for that than the 113,000 member MTA, the largest organization in the state, the Union of Educators. This is something that we should be fighting for. Thank you.